Now let's look at this example for CO2. Remember, even if it's different substances, they will have the same features in the phase diagram. What is going to be interesting about this ex 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 exercise is the use of the word normal in this case. Normal, remember, refers to one atmosphere of pressure. So we go locate one atmosphere of pressure in the phase diagram, then we do this line at the same pressure, we keep the pressure constant, and then we look at all the phase transformations that happen along that line. So the only thing that we can see is that transformation from the solid to the gas. So sublimation, it's actually normal, will have a normal sublimation point. Whereas neither the fusion or the boiling point can be called normal because they don't happen at the one atmosphere of pressure. Okay. So for this transformation, solid to gas, the sublimation normal boiling point is going to be at the intersection of this one atmosphere of pressure line with the equilibrium line of the solid gas transformation. So we read this temperature here and that's going to be approximately minus 79 Celsius. For the case of the boiling point and the fusion point, we're going to find a series of boiling points along this line and a series of fusion points along this line. So in order to answer these questions, what we have to ask is at what pressure? Once we know the pressure, we can tell for sure the boiling point at that pressure, the fusion point at that pressure. Okay, remember that. Now, this example, you can work it out. Please look at that, and it's about locating different points in the phase diagram. I will also suggest you to do not only the location of these different points, but also, for example, come up with trajectories that go changing the conditions, for example, increasing the pressure, and then what kind of transformations you get along the way. Or reduce the pressure, and see what transformations you get, increase the pressure, reduce the pressure, etc. Come up with your own trajectories and make sure that you understand the initial and the final states and also any possible transformation along that path. Now let's look at an example that it's actually interesting. We have sulfur. We also have solid, or liquid, and a gas region. It turns out though that for sulfur and some other substances you're going to have you're going to find something that we call allotropes. Those allotropes are basically two or more forms that aren't exactly on the same physical state. So this sulfur is in the solid state and it's also in the solid state. But the difference between those two is that they're going to have a different structural arrangement of the atoms within this structure. So that means that if you have, remember, a different physical or a chemical property, you have a different phase. So even though these two are solids, this is a phase different from this phase. We call them rhombic and monoclinic. So that the solid region that you see here is going to become now two different regions. One for the rhombic and one for the monoclinic. So, now in this region here, inside of this region, you're going to have a monoclinic phase. In everything outside of that region, you're going to have the rhombic phase. Another thing that it's interesting about this phase diagram is that, remember, all of this was actually a solid phase, or a solid physical state, two different phases. So now one thing that you can look at is that now we are creating these one point, two points, and three points. The characteristic of these points is that it's intersecting the rhombic phase, the liquid phase, and the monoclinic phase. Because there are three different phases, this is going to be a triple point. So triple point is not only between three different phases that are actually made up of three different states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. As long as it's three different phases, you're going to have a triple point. Same argument works here. 
you have the liquid, the gas, and the monoclinic phase. Triple point because three phases touch this one point. Triple point here, rhombic, monoclinic, and gas phase. Three different phases touches, three different phases touch that one point, so it's a triple point. It still holds true that along these lines, you're going to have an equilibrium between two different phases. The phases being, for example, in this case, the rhombic going to monoclinic. Even though they're, both of them are solids, still they are different phases. Monoclinic to liquid, monoclinic to gas, rhombic to gas, etc. Okay, so have that in mind. This is some important concept where you can have one more complicated phase diagram but that it's built upon the knowledge that you have from simpler phase diagrams. Let me know if you have questions about this but I thought this was a very interesting uh, example to put up.